भवतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सहवीर्यम करवावहे तेजस्विनावधीतमस्तु मावित विशावहे ओम शांति 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 You see the symbol Om all around you. I just felt that I should say briefly what Om stands for. In the Atharva Veda, in the Mandukya Upanishad, a verse appears which says, Om it eda aksharam idam sarvam tasyo upyakhyanam Bhutam Bhavat Bhavishat Eti Sarvam Omkara Eva. Om, this imperishable word, is the whole of this universal word. Its explanation is as follows What has become, what is becoming, and what will become, verily all of its Om. And what is beyond these two, these three stages, is also Om. It goes further and it says, Sarvam etad Brahma, I am Atma Brahma. He says, all this verily is Brahma. And the final statement, which is a Mahavakya of the Hindus, it says, I am Atma Brahma. The self is Brahman as well. Now, dear brothers and sisters, Namaskar. We have assembled today as a result of an initiative taken by Srimati Sangeeta Arya and Chandra, Chandra Arya to talk collectively about Hindu heritage. And I emphasize collectively because I know of no form in recent history in North America where Hindu laymen like myself, academic scholars like speakers later on, clergy, politicians of all stripes, government messages and represented from various countries where Hindus reside are all sitting on the same platform and talking. Hindus, as a previous speaker had said, are a diverse group, but I see here when I look around, people of origins extending from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Brahmaputra Basin to in, in the east to the mouth of the Narmada in the west, from our Dharma Bhumi, Bharat, Hindustan, India. A rose in any name smells the same. So thank you for asking me to share some thoughts about Hindu culture and heritage our Sanatan Dharm. I'd say our Sanatan Dharm is vaster in ex expense than what some superficial observations might suggest as being a mere vocation of religion. For us, it is only a means of self-cleansing, antahakaramshutri, towards our journey towards nirvana or self-realization and on reaching there being able to say as the Shavasya Upanishad says Pashyami yo asavaso purushara soham asmi what I see there is me our scriptures are not merely religious books our, they are an amalgamation of as Gita says Brahma Vidya and Yoga Shastra. It's the practice and principles all merged together. And our astute ancestors acknowledged Sanatana Dharma as such and very intelligently 
and very skillfully put everything together on a vichar based ahar, vihar, and achar. That, and that, and those four, as I mentioned, have been the saviors of our civilization. Interesting enough, I was introduced to this concept of ahar, vihar, achar, vichar right here, about 42 years ago, on Valentin Street at the Canadian National Library by Pucci Swami Chimayananda on his first talk in Ottawa where, when he said, what is culture? And I quote, vaguely, not exactly, he had said that when a group of people peacefully living in a specific region for a long period of life, time, develop a pattern of ahar, vichar, achar, and vebhar. We call it a culture. We call it a heritage. And when carried on, we call it a heritage. Now, our dharma has no, as somebody previously pointed out, no single prophet, no single scripture, no organizational hierarchy, and certainly no defenders and protectors of the, of the dharma. In fact, it is the reverse. We don't defend the dharma. Dharma defends us. Over the course of recorded history, our Hindu society has survived both invading ruthless invaders and very zealous evangelical missionaries and mercenaries. They were either un they were either unaware, unaware or could not comprehend that and reach the philosophical levels of our Upanishadic thoughts and mistook our expressions of art, sculptures, music, song, dance, as mere idolatry, and even tried to mutilate and destroy them. Yet, how did we survive this? It was because of the individual's vichar-based ahar, vihar, and achar. I would now just briefly define what these four entities are. As to the vichar, volumes can be written about it, but towards the end of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan, on the conclusion of his discourse, points out and says, Man mana bhava, Mad bhakto, madhyadi, maam namaskuru, maam vashyasi satyam te prasijane priyosi. Basically, what he said was, always be conscious of me. See me, feel me, when you act, see that I am there. That is the vichar. And if with that vichar, we follow our ahar, vihar, our, and achars. With this attitude of this man mana bhava, even mundane activities and, prof and professions become acts of worship. With, uh, with this, without this vichar, even the most elaborate yagna most elaborate puja, most elaborate yagya is just a mere act of self-gratification and a futile attempt of commerce with the divinity, considering that he would fall for it. Ahar. Ahar simply put means food. 
whatever we consume or, or take to sustain our bodies is food. Bhagavad Gita also analyzes and recognizes the importance of it and says, Ayu Sattva Balam Arogyam Sukhpriti Vivardhana Rasis Vidas Dya Ahara Sattvika Priya. He says, Proper food. And by this, we may say that when you are discussing ahar in the Sanskrit, on the point of view of a Sanskriti, it is the ahar for all the senses, not just the tongue. The ahar of what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you touch. For all that, if that is there, it is certainly leading to health, happiness, and growth. As far as Natural impulses, the Hindu impulses to adorn things. We have given all these glories a form. And the form in which we see, aha, uh -huh, we even have an Annapurna. We have, when it comes to music, song, dance, writing, creative understanding, we call her Saraswati. Saraswati, that which is my essence. The popularity of Hindu classical folk dance, the dances, folk dances, Bharatanatyam, Kuchipuri, Tatra, uh, Ghumar, Garbo, all these are, is aha for our, our senses of various kind and are part of our culture. Vihar, we Vihar basically means the space in which we live, the space in which we are, we exist. And we began this and reference to it, reverence to it, started in the Rig Veda. When our rishis composed things like the Bhumi Sukta. And in the Bhumi Sukta, we have called this earth is Vishambhara, Vasudhani, Pratishtha, Hiranyavaksha. Uh, somebody with a bosom of gold from which we can derive anything that we want. So that Vishambhara, Vasudhani, Hiranyavaksha is reflected in our traditions further in our environment. We could never Imagine having a new vihar made for ourselves without having a bhumi puja, without having vastu considered, without having a sense of directions, without having astronomical, uh, astrological uh, insight into it. Cleanliness of the vihar is again an essential part of it. And as far as the achara is our behavior, how we act to, with, with others, how we act, why we act, when we act, and why do we act the way we act, these are all directed by great sayings from the Vedas which, and the Mahavakyas. Even the act of namaste, which is so popular, is from the fact of recog and of recognizing the fact that I am Atma Brahma, Tattva Masi, Aham Brahma Asmi. And as His Excellency mentioned, the, con the with or concept of why we behave and how we are comfortable no matter where we are is the concept of Vasudheva Kutumbaka. And statements like Acharya Devo Bhava, Matra Devo Bhava, Pitra Devo Bhava di dictate our behavior with people. Behave, then the philosophy of karma, the, the, the concepts of reincarnation, and the Varna system, and the, the fact that we live not for rights, but for the payments 
of our realm, duties, which is which are the which we say is the Panch Maha realm. We have the Deva realm, the Rishi realm, the, the Pitra realm, the Nar realm, the Bhuta realm, and the four and in the four Pusharthas, where the ultimate aim is moksha, freedom from want. So that is the ahar, achar, vichar of the Hindu heritage. And we, we hope and pray that this continues and we are able to pass it on to our next generation. And seeing the children from Satya Sai Baba group made me so happy and so confident. And then there are several organizations, the Chinmaya Mission here, the, the temples, they're all running it. And the fact that we have all these celebrations, and thank you so much, Mr. Arya, for arranging something like this for people from all walks of life, from all segments of India, from all societies, could come and seriously think and talk about this. And this is what is going to promote Hindu heritage. And uh, it's not just a worship in the temples that is Hindu heritage. This is Hindu heritage. Thank you very much.